yeah, why do I want to go to this university? Why not some other universities? It's kind of like a missed opportunity to give a bit more nuance of what you did and like how great your contributions were. I think a lot of times it's easy to just kind of fall into the trap of like, oh, of course everyone will get into Harvard, of course everyone will get into like Oxford, but is it really for you? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about a few more things that you could do to audit your personal statement and make it even stronger. Now, so far, I've reviewed, I think, close to 50 of your essays and CVs, and these are all for university admissions. My most recent client actually got into all three universities that she applied to, which are Oxford, UCL, and Glasgow. Really happy for her, uh, but really along the way, uh, when I have been reviewing a lot of your essays, I have also come across common themes and common things that you can actually do yourself, like check for yourself without like paying for my service to look into how you can make your essay stronger, what are some of the, not mistakes because I don't think that there's like one right way to do your essay, but just common things that might um, leave your essay sounding a bit weaker. So here's just a few questions or things that you can check to make sure that you have tackled your essays in all possible angles. Now, I would like to just give a quick shout out that I do have a paid essay review service. So if you want me to look at your essay line by line, um, you can contact me through this details. But even if not, I have a lot of people who reach out to me and say they watch my videos and my playlist over and over again and they actually wrote like personal statements that got them into Oxford and Cambridge so totally um, not mandatory for you to like pay me because all the information I don't gatekeep they're all there for you to access but if you want like a fresh perspective to look into your essay then this is also available for you. Going on to the first one is knowing what is being asked from your personal statement or statement of purpose or research proposal. So one thing that I often find people miss in their personal statement is not really knowing what is being asked. So each university would be requiring you to write different things also for different degrees or courses. So for instance, if you're applying to multiple universities, um, one university might ask you to focus more on the why. Why are you applying for this degree? What are the relevant experiences that will allow you to thrive in that course? While some other universities might focus more on the after, how would getting into this course help you in your future career? And they want you to talk more about the future. So so it really depends on universities. There's no like one formula, one set formula to write your personal statement. But I do find that there are slight differences. So when I do like reviews uh, for my clients, what I do is I always look at the prompts that are being asked. And it's very simple actually. You just like look at the prompts that your university and your course is asking. Get, get a list. And when you're auditing your own personal statement or statement of purpose, look at whether you have checked all of the things that they ask you to show in your essay. Another thing that's quite important is to understand the different types of essays. So some universities do ask for a personal statement, which is more of a story narrative, like per really, really, really personal stories. Some of them actually ask for a statement of purpose or statement of academic interest, and those tend to be a bit more academic and less about like experience, but more about showing what you have done in your past experience that gives you enough knowledge or enough sort of academic um, base and foundations for you to thrive in that course. So again, it depends on the university. So make sure that you really look into what they ask. So you don't want to just like go into it thinking that it's all the same and you just write about like, oh, these are like my achievements from a past experience where probably like this university don't really want to know that or they can probably look at it in your CV maybe they really want to know like what exactly you did what exactly are the research that you went into in your past experience or in your undergrad if you're applying for a master's so do take note of what I ask for and write accordingly <laughs> it's very very important number two i tend to find people writing very surface level um, sentences that refer to their past experience and they miss the opportunity to explain a bit more on their own contribution their own value add it's kind of like a missed opportunity to give a bit more nuance of what you did and like how great your contributions were in your past experience so for example i volunteered in this stem ngo as a graphic designer but they only use that sentence to kind of say like hey you know i have some graphic design experiences um and i had it in this place from this what i would like to know is like 
why going into the STEM NGO? How is that important to you? So if you're applying maybe for like a master in like graphic design and you had that experience in NGO, you could actually use that as a, as, as a tool to story tell that, hey, I found that designing for an NGO is so much different from designing for like a business or for, you know, like university project. And I want to know how to like communicate um, to different types of audiences. So do you get what I mean? Like there's this um, added layer to your experience that you could actually try to peel and dive deep into and give more context and nuances. So don't just tell them what you did. Like I designed how many projects for whatever company or like whatever NGO, but talk about what are your reflections from that experience. Show that you actually think and reflect on your experience and you don't just do things because they task you to do the things. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> and this relates so much to my previous video on personal statement where I say don't make your personal statement a laundry list of the things that you've done. Because I don't think it's a really good use of a paragraph of like the word count to just say like I've done this, I've done that, but then that's it. Because like, I think what a lot of people want to show from this is just to show that I've done these things. But I think what people are, or like the admissions team are interested, or at least for me as a reader, what I'm interested in is like, okay, what do you think about it? What have you reflected upon that experience? So that it's not just like, oh, I'm doing it because I want to do it for my CV or I'm doing it because I just want some experience. Okay, and finally, number three. It's a bit hard to explain, so I'm gonna use some analogies, right? Let's put it this way. Um, you're talking to a potential romantic partner and uh, you ask them like, oh, what are you looking for and what you want in a relationship? And then they just kind of like give you a, a generic answer of like, yeah, I just want someone um, who's nice, right? That doesn't convince you. I mean, it, would, it wouldn't convince me. <laughs> I would be like, okay, but like in what way, right? You would like ask deeper questions. It's kind of similar with like people's essay where generally, Universities would ask for like, okay, tell me like why you want to go into in this university. Say like why you have to do this degree in Cambridge. Why do you have to do this degree in Harvard and not like any other university? So you want a very tailored answer that is unique to you. That is not just like, oh, I want to go to this, this university because you are number one in the UK or you're number one in the world because anyone could say that. Imagine like a romantic partner just saying like, yeah, I like you because like you look good, you look nice, or like you're kind. It's very generic, right? <laughs> you want a personalized and tailored answer. And to do this in your um, personal statement, it does require a lot of work. What I mean by work here is it requires a lot of thinking behind, yeah, why do I want to go to this university? Why not some other universities? Actually, it's a good time to also reflect on what makes you, you know, want to apply to these top universities? Because I think a lot of times it's easy to just kind of fall into the trap of like, oh, of course everyone will get into Harvard, of course everyone will get into like Oxford, but is it really for you, right? So one thing that I like to recommend uh, my clients, my students to do is one, to think about what's the first um, trigger that made you think that you want to apply to this university. Typically, it could be a very like superficial like, oh yeah, it's like, I mean, who, do, who doesn't want to go to Cambridge or like Oxford? And that's totally fine. Like, I was like that too. But there needs to be something else that would link you to the university. So for instance, for me at the time, I really want to learn from uh, Professor Ha Jun Chang. I read his book during my undergrad and I actually really, really enjoyed like his perspective and point of view. Although I didn't say that in my personal statement, I knew that that was some sort of elements that I want to add. So that's why I quoted him in my personal statement. So if you actually look into my video where I um, show you my personal statement, you would see that. So another thing that I recommend people to do is to look into the faculty members. So who might be teaching in that um, degree or if they don't teach you, at least they're in the same department or like similar department in that university that you think that getting into that program, although like you're not taught by this professor, you could at least like network or uh, work with him or her in future projects. So things like that, especially if you want to go into research, I think like research or PhD or academia in general, it's very important to do your homework and like trying to have a look like who are the faculties, what do they do, what do they specialize in, 
what are some of the past work that they've done that you're actually genuinely interested in that you want to work with so that's like one of the things that you can do you could also look into whether the university has a partnership with another think tanks or other ngos so make sure you do your research in terms of what the university offer not just in terms of the modules but like go into the details what are the centers they have in the university who are the faculty members who are the alumni where they are now it requires a lot of stalking and a lot of like just research in general so that's why i say like it you really have to do your homework and it does require a lot of research because if you don't do this if you don't personalize the why and you don't dive deep into that and you don't tailor it to your interest it'll be very difficult to make it strong because you would sound just like everyone else and it's kind of like a forgettable kind of essay because like oh yeah like everyone can say it's number one i want to get into this university just want to emphasize be crystal clear in what you want in that personal statement not just in terms of the university but whatever was prompted for you to write if they want you to write about why the course then be crystal clear about why is it because you have some sort of past experience that you know made you think that hey there's this gap in the knowledge that i want to uh, figure out more is it because i want to pivot my industry like previously i was like in engineering and i want to learn more about the management side of it whatever it is make sure it's crystal clear because if you just do like a very blanket um, statement like because I want to inspire people or because I want to learn about how to manage people if you think that anyone without your experience right could say it then it's probably not clear enough so be clear and try to always go a layer or two deeper and I cannot help you through like a video. It has to be something that you reflect on yourself and brainstorm with yourself and reflect and just reflect a lot. That's why in like one of my videos, I also say journal. <laughs> journal really helps untangle your thoughts and trying to find like root um, thoughts. Because I think oftentimes uh, we surf through life and we just come into a conclusion and we take it as like a personal fact and we don't really like dig deeper into why. Uh, why we think a certain way in the first place. So always do that and ref try to reflect that in your personal statement. Finally, just a little tip, don't over review it. Um, by these, I mean, don't run it with like 10 people. <laughs> I did run it to like seven people, but at the end, I tried to make sure that it, the personal statement still sounds like me because I don't want to like over review it to the point where I cannot like really see myself in this personal statement. Um, regardless of who you ask to review, always at the end of the day, ask yourself, is this me or is this like what people just impose um, on me? So that's it for today. I know it's application season now by the time that I'm uploading this. So best of luck for those of you who are applying. And again, just a little shout out if you're interested in my paid review service. All the details will be here and also in the description box below. I'll see you in my next one.